Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You live for God, you live for God. You know, put your arm on every day. Call on God as often as you can. Get into a habitual relationship with God that's every day. Whenever you have a little break, when you start giving your life for God, every time you get a spare moment, he should cross your mind. I'm just being real with you. You know, if you love God, he should be on your mind. Just like you got loved ones in this world that you love to death and they cross your mind. If you love God, shouldn't he cross your mind? Shouldn't he be a part of your daily thought process? <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to read from 1 Samuel today. I'm going to read about some sons. Chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting with verse 11. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Belial. Belial was the person that tried to get Belong to curse the children of Israel. So they're people who didn't know God. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest servant came while the flesh was seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest. For he would not have his sodden flesh, but raw. Now there's one stimulation, according to the new and the old, in regards to meats. Don't eat raw meat. You know, I know everybody watch TV, you're like, this is how a perfectly cooked steak looks. And it's dripping blood. Let me tell you something, people. Better safe than sorry. Oh, it's tender. And it's bloody. If you squish it down and blood dripping out, some is highly wrong. <laughs> Cook it some more. It ain't going to kill you. It's only going to help you. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desire. Then he would answer him, nay, but thou shalt give it now. And if it not, I will take it by force. This is what the sons of Eli were doing. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. And I think in regards to the New Testament and how the churches are today, you know why a lot of people don't go to church? Come on to our church. Well, when you read this Bible and you see things going on in the church, you don't have to be there. But the thing is, don't despise the Lord because of what the church is doing. Stay with the Lord. For men aboard the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen effort. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. When she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went into their home. And the Lord visited Hannah, so she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the Lord, the child grew, Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. Now let me tell you some people, there's something called turning the blind eye. And a lot of people do it. A lot of people in the church do it because they don't want the church to look bad. Well, it's going to look bad if they don't go with the words of the Lord. 
and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So you had men back in the day sleeping with the congregation. Hmm. First of all, they, they, this, is, this is what I was talking about earlier, yesterday, about the man of God should be the husband of one wife. You know, but these men didn't have no wives. They were just adulterers uh, and fornicators. And he said to them, why do you such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. And he corrected them. Hmm. Nay, my sons, for there's no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. Now, one thing about going to the wrong type of church, you can be misled. Hmm. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat him for him? Hmm. That's why he said, woe to those who teach, for they shall face the greater condemnation. That goes for me and anybody else who call themselves teaching and pick up this Bible and teach others. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Hmm. Ooh. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said to him, Thus said the Lord, Did I plainly appear to thy house of thy fathers when they were in Egypt and Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar to burn incense, to wear an effort before me? And did I give unto thy house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore you kick at my sacrifice? And at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitations, and honor thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefs of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Hmm. Look at the churches you see around here. They might not be getting physically fat, but they sure getting fat off the offerings of the people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and thy house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. How do you honor God? By keeping his man. How do you despise God? By not keeping his commands. It's very simple. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm, and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth wicked. The wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in that house forever. And the man of thine whom I shall not cut off from mine altar shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign to thee that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas. And one day they shall both, they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest and that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before my anointed forever. Who is that priest? You know who it is. Jesus Christ, the high priest. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and cross to him for a piece of silver and morsel of bread and shall say, put me, I pray thee, and to one of the priest's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. You see what happens when you, especially the men of God, who call themselves men of God or women of God, they call themselves women of God and go against his words and do things they shouldn't do. Now to think about this, key word here, Eli was old. God had already warned them, but he let them, him and his sons, let him let his sons run rapid forever. That's why God says, God says, slow to anger. Now, that's not the case with everybody. But in this case, he waited to see he was old. He gave him time to repent and correct his sons, and he didn't. Oh, I told him, Lord. I'm sure that's what he's going to tell him. Lord, I did try. You should have did more. Now, you and your... All the men in your house are cursed by, the, by God because of what you were doing. And he didn't wait till you was old. Look, he did the same thing with Solomon. When he was old, slow to anger. You understand? Let's go over to Psalm 119. 
read a few of these right quick. Psalm 119, starting with verse with let's see, where did I stop at? Pay. Starting with verse 129. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore does my soul keep them. The entrance of the words give of light. It give of understanding unto the simple. I open my mouth and plan it for I long for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou used to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, and let not in the iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of water run down my eyes, because they keep not thy law. Zadi. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant love of it. I am small and despised, yet do I not forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is everlasting, righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. Hmm, give me understanding and I shall live. Let me stop there. Give me understanding so I shall live. Now let's talk about Eli and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Now people look at the Bible, they're like, man, there's no way I would do such things as they did. People read this Bible and see. <laughs> What God does to those people who don't keep his commands, who don't follow his instructions. Saul, the first king of Israel. Disobedient. Didn't keep the Lord's commands. Didn't end well for him. The kingdom was stripped from him and given to another. And a lot of, you're going to see a lot of that going on in time to come. Why? Because it is written. And Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Hosea, Isaiah, it's written. He said, I'll replace your priests, your pastors, with my pastors. Look around. This was one of the first examples of that. Samuel, Eli raised his replacement. He taught his replacement. <laughs> you ever see people go to jobs, you ever worked at a place, and they want to fire the person who was there? And he don't know, he think he's doing good. And then they start training somebody. You're gonna train him. And then after they train him, like, we don't need you no more. You have been replaced. And that's going, that's gonna start going on a lot. Because God's house is not showing itself as God's house. This house called by his name is a rebellious house. Now, any house or church that's going against God's words and God's commandments is rebellious. Take a gay preacher. All they're going to do is teach, they, teach gays, you okay how you are? God made you perfect. I guess they're going to forget about the born again process. Unless a man will be born again, how can a man enter into his mother's womb and come out again? Aren't you a teacher of the Lord know not these things? <laughs> and that's how I look that's how Christ and the Bible looks at people who teach God's word you are so you don't know this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you in the words of the, the of Josh Myers one last time and I'm probably going to say it again she was at an interview her own mouth condemns her she said a man came a few years after she'd been preaching the word. I'm like, you know a woman shouldn't preach. She's like, I didn't know that. Well, first of all, if you didn't know that, you shouldn't even be a preacher. <laughs> you shouldn't be a preacher for multiple things. But you saying you didn't know just showed the whole world that you're a novice, that you're a rookie, that you don't even know the scripture. But you call yourself to be a preacher of righteousness and said, I didn't know that. 
It's clearly outlined in Timothy. And I'm sure back then they knew. You don't supposed to eat raw meat. Fornication is forbidden. You don't supposed to sleep with the women in the congregation. I knew a preacher that's still preaching right now. Mm -hmm. Know the word in and out. Was preaching to us in the job. But I know the truth behind him. He said God revealed to him that he can do what he can do. He can sleep with any woman he wants. Hmm. So God told you you can go against his commands because you're special. In that case, why did David get punished for the act of adultery and murder? If you okay with it, and David was his anointed, his chosen, and he rebelled against God and was punished. What makes this man think that God told him to do the exact same thing with no repercussions? Sound like the voice of the Antichrist. He said, my sheep know my voice. So if you read the word, it's like me reading the word, right? As a married man and knowing thou shalt not commit adultery. And a voice in my head, man, you, you can sleep with every woman in this congregation, married or single. And I'm like, Lord, that must be you. Because your words line up with what you just told me. No, they don't. If we don't line up with the word, how can it be true? But let me pause and I will continue.